presentation of Science Trek on Idaho Public Television is made possible through the generous support of the Laura Moore Cunningham Foundation, committed to fulfilling the Moore family legacy of building the great state of Idaho. Insects are the most diverse and numerous of any creatures on Earth. There are more than a million different types of insects, with more being discovered all the time. So find out about insects. Stay tuned. Science Trek is next. Hi, I'm Joan Cartan Hansen, and welcome to Science Trek. And welcome to the Orma J. Smith Museum of Natural History here at the College of Idaho. Scientists are standing by to answer your questions about insects. And later on the show, we'll take a look at a very important and endangered insect, the bee. But right now, let's learn a little bit more about insects. Insects are invertebrates. That is, they don't have a backbone or an internal skeleton like we do. Instead, they have an exoskeleton, a hard skin forming a protective outer shell. As insects grow, they shed their old exoskeleton and grow a new, larger one. An insect's body has three parts, the head, the thorax or middle section, and the abdomen. Insects have two antennae and six legs. If it has more than six legs, it's probably not an insect. Adult insects often have wings, and they can be amazing flyers. Butterflies can flap their wings four to 12 times per second. Mosquito wings move up to 600 times per second. Insects have mouth parts designed to how they eat. Butterflies have mouth parts designed to collect nectar from flowers, while mosquitoes have mouth parts designed to stab into skin. Beetles, grasshoppers, and ants have strong jaws called mandibles. When we humans chew, we chew up and down. When these insects chew, they chew side to side. Insects breathe through tiny openings known as spiracles. Spiracles can often be found along the sides of an insect's abdomen. Insects use their antennae to detect scents, vibrations, and currents of air. They also use them to taste. Some insects have tiny taste buds on other parts of their bodies, including their feet. Insects also have compound eyes. Dragonflies have the largest eyes of any insect. Their eyes take up most of their head. And with those big eyes, dragonflies can see in front, back, and below all at the same time. Insects go through one of two life cycles. About 10% start as an egg and then hatch into a nymph or a sort of mini adult insect. As the nymph grows, it sheds its exoskeleton several times until it reaches adult size. This is called simple or incomplete metamorphosis. Most insects go through a complete metamorphosis. In this cycle, the baby caterpillar hatches out of an egg as a larva, a worm-like creature. When it's done eating and growing, the larva surrounds itself in a casing and is called a pupa. Later, the butterfly emerges from the pupa as a full-grown adult. Insects are great adapters. Some are camouflage, so they blend into the foliage. Others have extra colorings to make it look like eyes to scare off predators. Many insects are social and live in organized colonies, and you can find insects in every part of the world. Insects play a vital role in the world's ecosystems. They pollinate crops, provide food for a wide variety of animals. They give us silk, honey, medicines, or even just good to eat. Scientists have identified about a million different species of insects, and they're still finding many new ones. Etymology is the branch of science devoted to the study of insects. And by understanding insects, we can learn a whole lot more about our world. And joining me now to answer your questions about insects are Bill Clark, the director of the Orma J. Smith Museum of Natural History here at the College of Idaho, and Alan Gologli, an etymology curator and beetle specialist at the Orma J. Smith Museum of Natural History. Thank you both for joining us. Well, thanks so much for having us. Thank you very much. Okay, let's go to your questions. Hi, my name is Hans. I go to Snake River Montessori School, and my question is, what's the most common type of bug? Well, if, if you're considering a uh, number of species, it's the beetles, the group of beetles called Coleoptera. 
uh, that are most common. There are about 500,000 described species to date, uh, with more being described all the time. If you were talking about just sheer numbers, it would probably be the ants. Uh, there are about 12,000 species of ants, and uh, many uh, have huge nests, sometimes up in the millions or hundreds of millions of individuals. Hi, my name is Keziah. I go to Taylor's Crossing Public Charter School, and my question is, how big is the biggest bug in the world? That's a tough question to answer. First, we would have to decide how we measure big. If you use weight as big, the uh, biggest insect would probably be the weta, which is a, an insect related to crickets and katydids and um, grasshoppers. It's a, the weta can get up to 71 grams. Almost as big as that are some, some of the large beetles, like the elephant beetle and goliath beetle. The, uh, they may weigh as just about as much as a weta, and the larvae of those beetles would be probably even heavier. If we, do, if we measure by the longest insect, that would probably be a species of walking stick. And there's one species that gets up to about 33 centimeters long. Cooper would like to know, what is an exoskeleton? Well, the exoskeleton is kind of like the name sounds. It's the hard uh, outer covering of the insect. Uh, it acts like the skeleton, serves the same purpose as our, our internal skeleton uh, in humans. And the exoskeleton protects the uh, insect, uh, allows it to, uh, to do its various functions. It's even waterproof. My name is Colin. I go to Cynthia Man Elementary. And my question is, is do all insects fly? Not all insects can fly. Um, most, adult, most adult insects have wings and can fly, but some of them have reduced wings, and the, those wings are not strong enough to, uh, to actually lift the insect. There are others that have completely lost their wings. The only immature insect that we know of that uh, can fly is the, uh, the mayfly. The nymphs and mayflies live in water, and when the nymph molts, it molts into a sub-adult stage, which only lasts for a few minutes. The sub-adult flies to uh, a rock or a branch or something like that, and molts again into the full adult stage. Hi, my name is Jada, and I go to Cynthia Main Elementary School. My question is, how long do insects live? Well, that's a, a, a bit of a variable. Um, most insects don't live over one year. Uh, some, some insects, ad adult insects, for example, mayflies may live only a few hours once they emerge uh, from the immature stages. Um, the 17-year cicada is a good example of a long-lived uh, insect. Uh, the nymphs live in the ground uh, for roughly uh, 17 years. Uh, when the adult emerges, uh, they may only live a few weeks following that. Uh, there are some, some beetle larvae that, uh, that live in wood that, that may exceed 35 to 50 years in lifespan. And another, another kind of outlier are some African termite queens that might live up to 60 years. Ava asks, what does the thorax do on an insect? The thorax is the primary segment for operating the insect, like flying, walking, jumping, running. Um, the uh, legs and wings are attached to the thorax and the muscles that run those uh, appendages are attached to the inside of the exoskeleton. Curtis would like to know, what is chitin? The exoskeleton of insects is made of chitin. It can be very, very hard or uh, soft and flexible. It's about, uh, it's about as uh, strong as the keratin that makes up the uh, fingernails of humans. Hi, my name is Benjamin and I go to Cynthia Mann Elementary School. And my question is, is it true that a cockroach can live up to seven days without its head? Well, that's true and in fact uh, a cockroach can actually live longer than that without its head. Uh, obviously it would not function uh, in, in its normal state. It, it couldn't really do the normal things that the insect would do. 
but it but it can live because uh, the blood would continue to circulate and it can live off of uh, fat deposits that it has stored uh, simply because uh, by cutting off the head and removing the brain uh, the insect still has nervous tissue inside which helps keep some of the the basic body functions going. Insect and spider blood isn't red like humans, it's clear or yellowish green. And insects and spiders don't have a system of veins to carry blood to their internal organs. Instead, blood just swishes over muscles and organs with the help of a simple heart. Hi, my name is Adriana and I go to Cynthia Man Elementary School. My question is, why aren't spiders a part of the insect family? Well, sp spiders and insects are, are very different and, and probably anyone who has, who has observed both, especially side by side, would recognize that. Um, spiders have, are div essentially divided into two, uh, two parts, a cephalothorax and an abdomen, uh, while insects are divided into three parts, the head, thorax, and abdomen. Um, normally, uh, insects will have six legs and spiders eight legs. Of course, that's variable. Uh, but the body part uh, separation is probably the main difference. Hi, my name is Christopher. I go to Sherman Elementary. My question is, why do mosquitoes suck blood? Only the female mosquitoes suck blood. The males have mouth parts, but they feed on sweet things like nectar or fruit juices. The females that do suck blood uh, you need that to nourish their eggs. Keegan asks, do all insects have six legs? The short answer to that is no. Not all insects have six legs. Some of them don't have any legs at all, especially larvae of, of uh, many species of insects. There are some that have more than six legs, like uh, some of the caterpillars. They can have up to 16 legs of uh, several different types. They have the regular six legs on the thorax, but they have other appendages, other legs on the abdomen that uh, act like legs, but they're not jointed like the thoracic legs. Hi, my name is Nora. I go to Snake River Montessori School. My question is, what's the smallest bug on the planet? Because some insect larvae and and the eggs are extremely tiny. I'll simplify this and we'll and, uh, maybe just talk about the uh, smallest adult insect. There's a group of, of uh, parasitic wasps called fairy flies, and they're normally about a half of a millimeter long, but there's one species that's far smaller than that. It's about one eighth of a millimeter. Hi, my name is Courtney, and I go to Cynthia Mann Elementary School. And my question is, what is the main thing that bugs eat other than plants and small bugs? Well, um, part, of, part, of, part of the plant world is, is wood, tree, tree wood, and uh, insects do feed on, many insects do feed on tree wood. Uh, some insects feed, are very, very specialized and feed on fungi, uh, different mushrooms. Uh, some feed on spiders only, some feed on millipedes only. And then there are some insects uh, that don't feed at all. Uh, some insects, uh, when they turn into adults, um, are only alive for a very short time for reproductive purposes, uh, mate and die. Ryan asks, how do insects talk to each other? Well, in insects communicate in a variety of ways. Uh, one, of the, one of the main methods is probably through chemical or, or the use of pheromones, chemicals that uh, insects release and other, other insects detect. Uh, there's, there's alarm, feeding, all different sorts of, of uh, pheromones. Uh, other ways that insects communicate are, are by, uh, by touching, uh, by sound, uh, vibrations. Um, some insects uh, uh, in the orthoptera group, for example, um, katydids and crickets, uh, those sorts of things stridulate, uh, kind of like a washboard uh, uh, noise that they make with their, their legs and their abdomen. It's uh, probably one of their main methods of communication. 
Hi, my name is Luke. I go to Hunter Elementary. My question is, how do insects crawl on walls? Well, most insects at, at the end of their legs have very tiny claws, uh, and those claws can reach into minute cracks and, and rough surfaces on a wall that, that we don't even realize are there, and thus, thus scale the walls easily. Um, you've all seen the example of flies cr crawling up a glass window, uh, and they may do this with uh, minute hairs on their feet uh, that actually act kind of like suction cups and allow them to move up these slick surfaces. Um, uh, some, uh, some insects will also have uh, little oil glands that will put a little bit of oil on those hairs and makes it uh, adhere more to slick surfaces. Ezra asks, why do insects have tiny hairs on their backs? Not all insects have hairs on their backs. Many do. There are various hairs that can be found on the backs of insects, and they can serve different functions. Some of them may be for protection against predators. Uh, other types of uh, hairs could be for um, feeling or, or uh, feeling the touch of something that, that might be dangerous. Uh, another type of hair uh, can, uh, can detect air movement. Bees are among the most important insects to humans because bees play a crucial role in our food supply. So let's learn a little bit more about bees. A bee is an insect, and all insects have three main body parts, a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. There are more than 20,000 different kinds of bees all over the world, and the honeybee is the most well-known. A honeybee has two antennae to help the bee touch, taste, and smell. It has a long tongue called a proboscis. Bees use it to sip nectar from flowers. A honeybee has compound eyes, which mean the eyes are made up of many tiny parts. Honeybees have four wings that allow it to fly up to 10 hours a day. That buzz you hear? It's the sound of the bee flapping its wings at over 200 times a second. It has a special stomach to hold nectar, and its body is covered with hair to help pick up pollen. Honeybees have bright stripes to scare enemies away and sharp stingers. Like people, honeybees are social creatures. They live together in a colony. The place a honeybee lives is called a hive. Hives can be in trees, in the ground, or if the bees are being raised by beekeepers, they live in boxes like these. Honeybees live very busy lives. The queen bee rules the hive. She can lay thousands of eggs in a day. Drones are male bees. They mate with the queen bee. The rest are worker bees, and they're all female. They don't lay eggs. They do all the other jobs. Houseworker bees make the honeycomb cells that you see in a hive. These cells are made out of wax that comes out of the bee's body. The cells are made into six-sided hexagonal shapes. The queen bee lays eggs in some cells, and other bees store nectar and pollen in the rest. Houseworker bees tend the eggs as they develop into larvae and then hatch into baby bees. Guard bees protect the entrance to the hive. They make sure bees from other colonies don't get into the hive. And how do they tell a robber bee from one of their own? By smell. Bees in a hive generally all come from one queen, so they all share her scent. So guard bees can smell a stranger. Most worker bees are foragers. They go to a flower, suck out the flower's nectar, and pick up the flower's pollen. A honeybee can visit thousands of flowers each day, filling up its pollen pockets and nectar stomach, going back to deposit its collection into the hive, and then going out for more. The process benefits both the bees and the flowers. Flowers need pollen from other flowers to grow seeds. So flowers produce nectar and pollen to attract the bees, and then bees come and spread pollen as they flit from one flower to another. The bees get the food they need, and the flowers get their pollen spread around. Now how do you think the honeybees tell each other where all the flowers are? They dance. Uh, no. Bees fly out of the hive in a circular pattern to find flowers. When one finds flowers, it goes back to the hive and does a dance. If the flowers are in the direction of the sun, it dances a figure eight pattern. 
If the flowers are to the right of the sun, it runs up and down the honeycomb toward the right. If the flowers are on the left, then the bee dances toward the left. And the faster it dances, the closer the food. Honeybees are the only insect that makes food people eat. Honey comes from the nectar the bees store in the hive. Though honeybees are the most well-known, there are lots of different kinds of bees, and they come in different colors and live in different places. They don't all make honey, but they do all play an important role in our ecosystem. Without bees and their pollination, plants wouldn't be able to produce the food that we eat. So bees, flowers, and people all work together. Isn't that sweet? Hi, my name is Isaiah, and I go to Cynthia Man Elementary. My question is, how did insects get their color? Insect colors have evolved for a number of different reasons. Uh, some of those could be camouflage, some uh, uh, bright colors to warn predators away. Others might be very distinctive patterns so that they can recognize others of the same species. The uh, colors are produced in a couple of different ways. One is like uh, a pigment, which would be in the exoskeleton. It'd be kind of like paint. Another way is structural. The uh, structural uh, colors come from many layers of, many fine layers of chitin that reflect, reflect and refract light differently, producing spectacular colors like uh, the feathers on peacocks. Hi, my name is McKenna, and I'm, my question is, what's the world's most poisonous insect? Well, that's kind of an interesting question. Um, poisonous uh, to us refers more to uh, something that would be poisonous to eat or poisonous to the skin. Um, we're assuming that the, that the person asking the question maybe really refers to venomous, uh, and lots of insects do have venoms, uh, hymenoptera, the bees, ants, and wasps especially have venoms. Uh, probably the most potent of those may be um, one of the harvester ants in Arizona. Um, a sting, one sting from one of those ants um, could, could potentially put a person in the hospital. Elijah asks, what are insect wings made of? The exoskeleton of an insect is made of chitin. The wings are formed of a, a very thin layer of chitin, and that's held together held rigid by veins. If you look at the wings of a bee or a dragonfly or some butterflies, you can very clearly see the veins that, that uh, hold the wing up. Bill, why did you want to be an etymologist? Well, it, it seems that every child, and we'll see, we'll see if you guys agree, uh, has what they call a bug stage. And some of us never outgrew it. Um, it, uh, for myself, I guess it's the diversity. Um, I'm involved in some biodiversity projects in Baja California and in Big Bend National Park. And uh, each day you go out, you find something different. And that's pretty hard to do in some fields of study. Alan, if someone is interested in studying insects when they grow up, what should they study in school? To become a professional entomologist, you should probably study math and uh, science and physics and the, the courses that you would need in high school uh, in order to get to a college that has a good program in entomology. However, uh, many of our really, really good entomologists do it as a hobby. And some of those people uh, never, had, uh, never had a college class in entomology and they got to be expert entomologists just by being very observant and very careful uh, in recording their observations and um, very persistent. Hello, my name is Jane Lynn. I go to White Pine Charter School and my question is, how do bugs survive in the winter? Well, insects uh, survive the winter in various ways. If they're from, from uh, this part of the country where we have colder winters, uh, some simply by avoiding it, uh, like the monarch butterfly may fly uh, south where it's warmer for the winter and then fly back uh, north uh, after the winter. Uh, some insects will uh, remain here, uh, avoid the winter by, by crawling into uh, uh, cracks in rocks, uh, 
maybe by crawling underneath rocks, by burrowing deep into the soil, uh, such as ants, um, or by, uh, you might even uh, recall in the fall, the insects coming into your house, and that may be to get ready to escape the cold of the winter. Clara asks, are there insects that live at the bottom of the ocean? No insects have been discovered yet at the bottom of the ocean, and we believe that there are probably none there because there are very few species that can even survive in seawater. There are some that live in the cracks of rocks and on the algae, on rocks in the tidal zone, and there are some species of water striders that can s skate across the surface of the ocean, and they never have to come to land. They look like little bubbles dancing across the surface. Hi, my name is Adriana, and my question is, can all insects hear things? I think all insects can hear vibrations. Uh, our ears detect vibrations primarily through the air, but insects can also uh, detect vibrations through uh, water, through the ground, or whatever they're standing on. Carly would like to know, are there flying ants? Uh, yes, certainly there are, are flying ants. Um, an, an ant nest produces uh, winged males and females for reproductive purposes. So certain larvae and pupae are dedicated to becoming uh, winged individuals. At certain times of the year, it may be uh, uh, dictated by precipitation or other climatic uh, variables. Uh, the winged insects, insects will fly out of the nest uh, meet with other insects uh, from the same species, usually at, at high locations, and mate. Uh, at that point, usually the female flies off to look for a, uh, a nesting site and will lose her wings. Uh, the male usually uh, will die shortly thereafter. I'm sorry we've run out of time. My thanks to Bill and Alan for answering students' questions today. Well, thanks so much for having us on your program. Thank you. It's been very interesting. My thanks also to the folks here at the Orma J. Smith Museum of Natural History at the College of Idaho. You can learn more about insects and lots of other science topics on the Science Trek website. We'll answer more questions about insects on Science Trek, the web show. And if you want to submit a question for Science Trek, it's easy, and you and your class can win prizes. You can send it as an email or as a video question, record it on your webcam or cell phone. And if you're an educator, we'll even lend you a camera. Our last prize winner was Audra at Compass Public Charter School. So to find out all about insects, how to send in your questions, and how to win, go to the Science Trek website. And each week, check out my blog for the latest science news for kids. You'll find it all at idahoptv.org slash science trek. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on Science Trek. Presentation of Science Trek on Idaho Public Television is made possible through the generous support of the Laura Moore Cunningham Foundation, committed to fulfilling the Moore family legacy of building the great state of Idaho. If you want to learn more about this topic or watch our videos, check out the Science Trek website at idahoptv.org slash science trek.